Welcome to this service of Holy Communion for the first Sunday of Epiphany. Let's light our candle. Jesus is the light of the world, and in him there is no darkness at all, and the darkness cannot understand it or consume it. The Lord be with you. Let's start with our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We start with our first hymn, which is number 1012, 1012, The Days of Elijah. Oh, 
Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. We say together, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of a Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. and the collect for the first Sunday of Epiphany. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your son and anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us who are born again by water and the Spirit that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 42, beginning at the first verse. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, a smouldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter, or be discouraged till he establishes justice on the earth. In his law, the islands will put their trust and hope. This is what God the Lord says. He who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and all that comes out of it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it, I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and make you to be a covenant for the people and a light to the Gentiles. To open the eyes of the blind, to free captives from prison and release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not give my glory to another or my praise to idols. See? The former things have taken place, and now new things I declare. Before they spring into being, I announce them to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, beginning at verse 34. Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism. 
but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how he went about doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses who God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second hymn is number 67. 67, breathe on me, breath of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The word of the Lord endures forever. The word of the Lord is the good news announced to you. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew chapter 3, beginning at verse 13. Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so for now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went out of the water, and at that moment, heaven was opened. 
and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's bow our heads to pray. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and bring glory to you alone. Amen. Today is the first of Epiphany, or the Sunday when we remember the baptism of Jesus. Something really important for you to note is that God always tells us in advance what's going to happen. And in our first reading from Isaiah, hundreds of years, hundreds of years before Jesus, in chapter 42, God gives great detail about what he's going to do. Here is my servant, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit upon him. He'll bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets and a bruised reeds will not be broken or smoldering wick he will not stop out. And in Acts, when Peter is giving a proclamation, he says, we all know what we saw. We all know what Jesus did. We all know that he went round doing good and healing the sick and delivering those under the power of the devil because God was with him. We are witnesses to it. You know the message that God sent to the people of Israel, good news of peace through Jesus, who is Lord of all. You know what happened through Judea beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached. And John preached the baptism of repentance. And that's why John felt that Jesus didn't need to be baptized because he knew as the son of God, there was no need to repent. But symbolically, Jesus set an example for us who do need to repent for the washing away of our sins through the blood of Jesus and the word of God. And if that wasn't enough, it goes on, this is what God, the Lord says, he who created heavens and the earth, stretched them out, spread out the earth and all that comes on it, who gives breath to its people. And life to those who walk on it, reminding us right back in Genesis when God created Adam out of the dust and then breathed on him and he lived. And of course, the Holy Spirit in Hebrew is the Ruach HaKodesh, the breath of God. So the very breath of God breathed into Adam and he lived. The very breath of God moved upon the face of the waters. And the very breath of God, like a rushing wind, came in on the day of Pentecost to those disciples who were terrified and alighted on each one of them like flames of fire. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And here, we hear about when Jesus is baptized in the River Jordan. But when he came out of the water, heaven was open. And John the Baptist saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and landing on Jesus. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. And we see through these symbols of the Holy Spirit, the wind, the breath, the fire. Remember Elijah uh, when challenging the uh, false 
priests and prophets of Baal, answered by fire from heaven, flames of fire, and also as a dove, breath, wind, brings life, blows away all the cobwebs and all the rubbish. Fire cleanses us, enlivens us, empowers us, burns away the dross and the sin, and the Holy Spirit, like a dove, gentle, beautiful, pure, easily frightened away, reflecting the love of God, the transformation of servanthood from a rebellion that most of us have, allowing us free will to accept more of Jesus and less of us. And in these uncertain times, where our faith is being challenged, where darkness seems to be on the increase, the promise of God's word is these things will happen. Perilous times will even come upon us. But remember what's in the word of God. The Lord himself told us this would happen has given us the tools in his word to know how to stand in the midst of it and shine brighter. And Jesus himself humbled himself, taking the form of a servant, putting to one side the power that he had as the Son of God. And the Holy Spirit, some people call the Holy Spirit it, but the Holy Spirit is he. a true equal person of our magnificent God. God has revealed himself to us in three distinct ways. Our Father in heaven, the creator, sustainer, and bringer of life of all things. The word of God, Jesus, the Son, who became flesh, so that we would see the character of God in action, the selflessness, the sacrifice, the love, and the blessed Holy Spirit who brings life from death, who cleanses, who teaches, who rebukes, who brings knowledge and wisdom and understanding and who dwells within our hearts by our free will so that that potential which God put within each one of us can be released and be a blessing to each other but also as a sign and seal of our adoption as children of God. Jesus was baptized when he didn't need to be. We are baptized because we do need to be. We need to be baptized in water. We need to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. Because if we just do it by water and a declaration, that's fine. And people who are born again, But we need the Holy Spirit because we need to change. We need to be refined and purified like silver and gold. We need to become transparent so that when the Holy Spirit 
shines out of us. People don't see us, they see the Lord. But that also has to come through choice, through our own free will. Because the Holy Spirit, as a gentle, beautiful, pure, holy dove, is easily scared away and will not impose himself on us and not do anything that we don't allow. What seals us for an inheritance that's eternal, that starts now. And that's why many times people say that when they're filled with the Holy Spirit, it's almost like before they knew a lot about Jesus, and this is my personal experience, I was religious. But then when I was filled with the Holy Spirit, it's almost like everything before was black and white, and now it was technicolor, and I understood. Because some of the things in the Bible are difficult to get your head around. And it says to those who are perishing, the word of God is foolishness. And the Holy Spirit gives us knowledge and understanding and opens our eyes and our ears and our hearts and our mouths to testify. So if you want to move on with the Lord, if you want to build a depth of relationship with him, read his word, find out what he says, find out what he tells us is going to happen. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your spiritual eyes and hearts and give you understanding and knowledge and wisdom and discernment because we have to test everything. We have to make sure that when we read the word, we don't take it out of context. There are some people who use scripture for their own ends. Whereas we should be servants, obedient, prayerful, watchful, thankful, grateful, and know that we are loved. Jesus said he would give us the bread of life and the living water, and we would never be hungry or thirsty again. So let us come to him who is faithful and true and give him all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. And Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you that you gave us an example in your Son, Jesus. And you also gave us a record of your word and your inspiration for life. We pray, Lord, that you send the Holy Spirit upon each one of us afresh. Set us on fire with love for you. The more of you and less of us that we turn from our wicked ways, that you forgive our sins and heal our land. Thank you, Lord God, for coming to save us. We pray for our nation, particularly we pray for deliverance from this pestilence. We pray, mighty God, that you daub the precious blood of the Lamb on our doorposts and lintels and keep us safe. We pray, Lord, that we will trust in you and not just in the vaccine. Because you are the Lord, our healer.
We pray that you direct each one as to the actions they should take. And we pray, Lord, that you cleanse our land and deliver us from all that is unclean. We pray for our Queen and the Royal Family and our Prime Minister and our Government for protection, but also wisdom in this unprecedented and challenging time. Thank you, Lord God, for coming to save us. We pray for the nations of the world. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray that you will hedge them around with a wall of fire. We pray that you hedge them around with your angels. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We also pray, Lord, for the United States of America, our cousins. We pray, Lord Jesus, for your resolution from this difficult and challenging time, both from the pestilence, but also from the tensions and divisions in that nation. Thank you, Lord God, for coming to save us. We pray for those who are sick. Pray for Jim and Jenny in Scotland, for Dave and Alan, Jeff, Chris's mum, Mick and Mary. Pray for Richard. Pray for Pam, Terry and Enid. Pray for Richard and Ruth. Pray for John. Pray for Lindsay. Pray for Chris, Philip and Beryl, his wife, Barry, Mark Madeley, Peter and Mark. For Craig in America, for Karen, for Caroline, for MK, for Anne Williams and Mike Teeny in Whitford, for John and Sheila, Yvonne and Chris with long COVID, Chris B, Tom, Mr. Lewis, Doreen, Barbara. And we also ask for your blessing on Darren and Lucy and Esther, for Paul and Sue, for Brian, Trevor and Maya and Catherine, for Morgan and Martina and for Zach. We praise you, Lord, that you are our healer and by your stripes we are healed. We ask, Lord, for healing in body, mind and spirit and that we bring all the glory and all the honour and all the praise to you alone. Thank you, Lord God, for coming to save us. And Heavenly Father, we pray for ourselves, for our churches, for our congregations and communities. We pray, Lord, that you will help us to turn to you, to receive more of you, to reflect more of you to be a blessing to those whom we serve, to our families and friends and community, that the earth may be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Our Saviour Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. 
Our next hymn is number 50, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. Number 50. Lord is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands has made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech that, with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
how wonderful the work of your hands, O oh Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising again in glory. We rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. And as we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. And bring us at the last, with all the saints, to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in the one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. The 
blood of Jesus is for me. The blood of Jesus sets me free. The blood of Jesus is victory. Praise the blood of the Lamb. The blood of Jesus for me was shed. The blood of Jesus, life from the dead. The blood of Jesus, the demons fled. Praise the blood of the Lamb. Lord, in your blood, I'm cleansed, renewed, forgiven. In your blood, I know I'm truly free. Jesus, to you, be power and strength. Satan's hordes all flee in fear and terror, for your blood has conquered all their power. Let us pray. Lord of all time and eternity, you opened the heavens and revealed yourself as Father. In the baptism of Jesus, your beloved Son, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, complete the heavenly work of our rebirth through the waters of new creation, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, the bright splendor whom the nations seek. May we, who with the wise men have been drawn by your light, discern the glory of your presence in your Son, the Word made flesh, even Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our final hymn is number 1227, 1227, How Great Is Our God.
God the Father, who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light from light, lead you also in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you, all whom you love, cherish, and pray for this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, in the name of Christ. Amen. So until next time, it's a big God bless you from me, Greg. <laughs>